Decent Sampler is a free sampler app for iOS. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to download the app, how to download sample libraries, and how to make music with it. Okay, let's go. So the first thing you need to do before you do anything else is download the app. You can search for it on the App Store as Decent Sampler. If you're having trouble finding it, there's also a link in the description to this YouTube video. Once the app is downloaded, you can start it up. The first time you launch the app, it's going to ask you to create a Decent Samples account. This is free and it's a requirement for downloading the in-app content. If you already have a Decent Samples account, you can just log in. Once you've done that, it's time to get a sample. If you tap the Browse button up here, you will be presented with the Sample Browser. Uh, you can download the in-app purchases by tapping on them and then tapping Get or Load. As you can see, it downloads right within the app. Once it loads, you tap once outside of this loading box and you have your instrument. You can play it with this little on-screen keyboard, you can play it with uh, an external MIDI controller, or you can actually use this app as an AUV3 plugin. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. There's also this nice MIDI learn functionality, which allows you to map external controls like MIDI continuous controllers or the mod wheel to internal parameters like the knobs within Decent Sampler. Okay, so that's how you download samples within the app, but you can actually load any sample you want provided it's in the right format. Thanks to Fred Poirier and Pianobook, uh, there's now a huge cache of samples that you can download and use within this sampler. So right now the best way to get these onto your device is to actually download them on a desktop computer and move them over to your device. I should say that this process that I'm about to show you is going to seem a little bit clunky, uh, but some improvements are underway and it's going to get a lot easier in the coming months. So the first part is pretty self-explanatory. You go to the Piano Book website, uh, you find the sample that you want, you click download, uh, and it downloads into your downloads folder. Once it's downloaded, you'll have a zip file. Now, ordinarily, if you're using this library on a desktop computer, you'd unzip the file and you'd have a folder structure that looks like this. Unfortunately, because of Apple sandboxing limitations, there's actually no way for Decent Sampler to open this folder-based structure. The way around this is to actually use the zip file itself as the DS library. And all you have to do is you have to change the extension on the file from zip to DS library. Actually, there's a little secret here, which is the latest version of Decent Sampler for iOS can actually open zip files directly. Um, but yeah, the correct way of doing it is to change the extension to DS library because then you get the nice Decent Samples logo icon. Okay, our next order of business is to get the file over to the iOS device. And there are a bunch of ways to do this. Um, you probably know better what works for you. Since my iCloud drive is a space that's accessible from both my Mac and my iPhone, that's a pretty easy solution for me. You can use Dropbox. You could probably like even airdrop it to yourself somehow. Basically, Decent Samplers should be able to load the file from any place that that iOS Files app can see. And back on our device, all we have to do is go into the file menu, click load and find the file. And it loads right up. Once you've loaded a file once, it will be added to your user library. And when you hit browse and go to my libraries, it should show up on the left hand side. That makes it easier so you don't have to like find and refind files. So up until now, we've been doing everything in standalone mode. We're using Decent Sampler just like a regular app. But you can also use it as an AUV3 plugin. Let's load up GarageBand. When you add a track, you choose AUV3 as the instrument type. And from there, you can choose Decent Sampler. Once you've done that, you'll have a Decent Sampler track. And you can record MIDI, you can draw on the piano roll, and add MIDI parts. Basically, use it just as you would an internal instrument. If you're on an iPhone with a small 4-inch screen, or if you're using the app as an AV3 plugin and it doesn't have enough room to display the full UI, it will display a kind of condensed UI that doesn't have the background image. That's by design, uh, and it's pretty much the only way that we can still show controls uh, when there's limited screen space. Okay, so that's basically how you use the plugin. Let's talk a little bit about tweaking for performance. So under the hood, there are two playback modes, RAM and disk streaming. So as you may know, generally speaking, computers and phones have two types of storage. They have RAM and disk storage. 
RAM storage is fast, uh, it's temporary, there's not that much of it to go around, whereas disk storage is slower and more permanent, um, and there's also a lot more of it. Disk storage is where we store our files, files like spreadsheets or sample libraries. In order for a sampler to play back audio files, it needs to read data from that disk storage, but that disk storage is slow. To make matters worse, other apps are requesting data and using CPU and doing stuff that make it more and more likely that the sampler won't be able to get the data it needs in time to play it back. And if the sampler can't read fast enough, you'll get noticeable gaps and pops in the audio. So one way around this is to save all of the data in RAM. That's what the RAM mode is. So for small sample libraries, it actually is very, very reliable and it works really well. But for larger sample libraries, you can actually just run out of RAM which is why I almost always recommend that people choose disk streaming in this dialog box. Instead of reading the audio data one byte at a time, the sampler actually reads chunks of audio data called buffers. The bigger these chunks are, the bigger the buffers, uh, the more reliable the sampler will be. And that's why there are these settings. But there's a downside to setting these values too high. Apple limits the amount of RAM that any AUV3 plugin can use. And get this, they don't actually tell developers what that limit is. Um, you're just blithely going about your work and suddenly you get a message saying that the, the plugin is out of memory. All of this will get better in the coming months. Uh, for one thing, Apple's limits seem to be relaxing a bit with each OS release. I'm also working on a couple new memory caching strategies which should uh, decrease the memory usage footprint. So uh, yeah, some hope there. That being said, despite all of these challenges, uh, I think the magic of having a true sampling platform on a mobile device is, um, yeah, definitely worth it. If you want to see some superb examples of the kind of stuff that can be done with Decent Sampler, as well as many other iOS technologies, uh, definitely check out Perplex On's uh, Instagram channel. They are an electronic artist from Munich who make just fantastic music using just iOS. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, hope this video was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if you run into issues, uh, message me via the contact form on the Decent Sampler site. Um, yeah, go make some music. <laughs>